as imbibed the new world of work, leaders are prioritizing the DEI agenda for the overall health of the organization. That brings me to our next session, which will highlight the research insights on uncovering the blind spots, diversity, inclusion, and belongingness in the new world of work with Rohan Sylvester, who's a recruitment evangelist at Indeed. I'm super excited for this one. Welcome, Rohan. Uh, the frame is all yours. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this session. Let me first take this opportunity to wish you all a happy new year and hope you're staying safe and healthy. I'm Rowan Sylvester, recruitment evangelist at Indeed. In today's session, I'll be talking to you about Indeed's latest report titled Uncovering Blind Spots, in which we take a closer look at the state of diversity, inclusion, and belonging in today's workplace. But let me start this session with some pop culture. Many of you here may have watched the popular song Gangnam Style. It is one of the top 10 most popular YouTube videos of all time and has more than 4 billion views. That's like every person in India watching the video three times. But let's imagine that when you found Gangnam Style on YouTube for the first time, instead of looking like this, the video looked like this. What's wrong with this picture? Well, obviously the video is upside down. You see, when YouTube first launched its video app, the problem, this problem kept happening and it happened between five and 10% of the time. So what were people doing wrong? Well, it turns out when they analyzed the issue, it revealed a surprising error, not with the users, but with the developers. You see, the team that developed the app were predominantly right-handed and based the rotation of the app on the way they held their phones. And they had not accounted for left-handed users who would naturally rotate their phones differently when watching a video. Those right-handed developers hadn't intended to leave out left-handed users. They just hadn't considered another group with a different orientation and experience. What we are seeing in this example is unconscious bias. Unconscious biases are stereotypes or assumptions thoughts and feelings about certain sets of people, things, or groups. These are stereotypes or assumptions that we make outside of our own awareness. And while we encounter this in the larger world, we also find this happening in our workplaces. Biases can result in both negative and positive consequences. Like in the case of the YouTube app developers, their unconscious bias impacted users with frustration and inconvenience over improperly rotating videos, and it impacted the brand with left-handed users feeling that something must be wrong with the app. Some common areas where we find unconscious bias include race and ethnicity, a person's gender identity, how old or even how young people are, or even neurodiversity. This can range from something as simple as a person being a visual learner to someone being on the spectrum, as well as attitudes towards people with disabilities. Because these biases are unconscious and, and are often hidden within talent acquisition processes, practices, company policies, you've got to actively search throughout every stage to uncover and address them. This can seem quite daunting and challenging, but to solve a problem, you first got to know you have a problem. And this is what we at Indeed India set out to uncover. While the pandemic created widespread awareness and brought about a change in sensibilities, we wanted to understand if this awareness combined with new ways of working had created a more inclusive atmosphere in Indian workplaces. So we launched a large scale study in October of 2021, where we surveyed over 1,400 employees and over 1,100 distinct employers across 11 Indian cities. And we did this across multiple sectors, including BFSI, IT, media and entertainment, retail and telecommunication. I'm happy to share with you some of the key findings of this study today as we launch our report called Uncovering Blind Spots. First, we sought to answer my earlier question. Does bias exist in today's workplace? We asked both employers and employees this question and we got interesting and in some cases, disparate responses. 
Our study showed that employers recognized that many types of biases still exist in their organizations. But what was interesting is that these biases and prejudices significantly differed from those biases noticed or experienced by employees in the workplace. Let's take a moment and look at this slide. Employers perceive that biases exist primarily with respect to gender and sexual orientation, religion, caste and ethnicity, and political ideologies. Unsurprisingly, these are differences that get the most airtime, as in these differences are what people are always talking about in society. But employees felt differently. Employees believe that there are greater biases related to disability status, as well as other areas like age and marital status, economic status, as well as lifestyle and background. I think a lot of us are influenced by the conversations that are happening around us. And this influences what we think is important. This unmistakable difference in opinion between employers and employees brings up the question, are your programs really addressing the right biases and prejudices? And given that nearly eight out of 10 organizations reported that their primary focus on diversity is to hire women, we set out to understand if this has created a more positive and inclusive environment for women. So we asked female employees about the barriers and biases they face in the workforce to understand what the ground realities are. And the results were quite eye-opening. Women still experience several forms of discrimination at the workplace. Almost 20%, that is one in five women, experience discrimination or prejudice based on their gender or sexual orientation. And similarly, more than 15% also experience prejudice based on their background, specifically their economic status. Despite having greater flexibility at work during the pandemic, with work from home, remote work, flexi timings, women employees across some of the largest cities and metros in the country still face very real and challenging biases when applying for jobs or advancing their careers. While companies may have a conscious intention to hire diverse employees, their efforts will be wasted if the company culture itself not inclusive. We all have heard the phrase, there's a difference between being invited to the party and being asked to dance. When it comes to inclusion and a sense of belonging, one out of every three employees, both men and women, feel that they are unable to be their authentic selves at work. Let's talk about this for a minute. Or let's think about this for a minute. I'm sure we have all spent time socially outside of work with a colleague and may have noticed that they behave just a little differently from how they are at work. It is possible that they may not feel comfortable enough to be themselves at work, worrying about how they might be judged or how different they might seem to others. We also look more closely at what employees feel when they say they can't be themselves at work. Nearly one in four employees feel ignored in social contexts at work, such as team meetings. Nearly one in four employees feel ignored in social contexts at work, such as team meetings. One in five have claimed to either have been physically or emotionally threatened, and a similar percentage of employees have faced sexual harassment or physical and emotional violence. This is not something we can ignore. After years of DINB programs and interventions, what does it mean if a quarter of our workforce either feels uncomfortable, threatened, unsafe, or just feel that they can't be themselves at work, a place where they spend a majority of their time? The next time you're in a meeting with three to four other people, take a look around to see, is everyone participating? Is there someone who isn't getting an opportunity to speak or to be heard? And if so, can you make them feel included? In a time when employees are looking beyond a company's compensation and perks to more meaningful values and a culture of inclusion, trust, and psychological safety, it is time for us to take a look at our existing intervention. But it's not all doom and gloom. There is good news. During the pandemic, 49% of organizations prioritized DINB initiatives and have put in place programs and processes for their employees to feel more connected to the company's culture and more than a third of the remaining organizations across various sectors and industry sizes intend to do so over the next 18 months. But if you're wondering, why does it matter if people are their authentic selves or feel safe 
or more included and like they belong. Here's why. The companies that have implemented DINB initiatives or plan to do so believe they will foster innovation and enhance customer responsiveness and perception. It's simply, it's simple really. Happier employees are more productive. In addition, companies also saw that an increased focus on DINB enhanced their employer brand, improving talent attraction and retention. Interestingly, a majority also agree that deprioritizing DINB creates a disconnect between companies and their employees. In the long term, this could impact hiring effectiveness, revenue, and the value of the employer brand. There is no doubt there is greater awareness today about the impact of DINB for businesses. However, with the onset of the pandemic, the focus on DINB has been deprioritized. Our study has shown that groups that were historically marginalized continue to face challenges and barriers at work. And the pandemic continues to disproportionately impact these groups, be it women or people with disabilities. Therefore, there is a need for us to take a step back, reevaluate, speak to employees and find solutions that can help bridge these gaps. And there's no better time to do this than now at the start of a new year. You know, as a recruitment evangelist, I'm often asked about strategies and tools to improve diversity in hiring. Now I must say there is no silver bullet, but I say there are a few fundamental things you can do to be more aware of your blind spot. One of the most important things you can start doing is start collecting data. Data is powerful and data can help identify the real barriers that your employees are facing, not the ones we perceive. You can evaluate your existing processes and get feedback from candidates to see what is working and what isn't. You can identify areas for improvement and apply technology thoughtfully to address those issues without reinforcing further biases and barriers. And always measure everything you can do. There are many things you can be measuring, including checking out your employer brand on Glassdoor, which has a diversity rating on its company pages. It gives you an idea of what your employees think about diversity at your organization. The bottom line is there is no perfect solution, but you can take steps towards improving your organization's culture as leaders and decision makers. You can influence the adoption of practices that provide more equitable opportunities for all your candidates and employees. Now, I'd like to say thank you for joining me today. We are happy to help you as you grow towards hiring and building more diverse and inclusive workplaces. You can download a copy of our report at the Indeed virtual booth, or you can also speak to a hiring specialist on recruitment strategies. Please feel free to fill up the contact form at the Indeed virtual booth, or you can write to us at indiamarketing at indeed.com. That's indiamarketing at indeed.com. Thank you. Thank you, Rohan, for sharing your perspectives with all of us today. You can proceed to the networking lounge and network with the people. Also, do not forget to check out the expo area for videos and presentations shared by our partners at their booth.